but as I always say, this isn't a workshop as such, it's just um, you sort of having a look at seeing what I'm doing and uh, we're making a little piece together, I think. I think we still want to do that, so we'll be doing that this evening. Um, hello to Barbara Nolan in California. Uh, I was chatting to her online last night and I think um, she's got an interest in perhaps seeing how to do hair or animal fur. Uh, so if we've got time this evening, we'll, we'll do that. Um, but first of all, uh, just a bit of an update on things that I'm doing. Um, as you know, that I, I had a couple of pieces in an exhibition recently, um, three pieces, and two of them sold, so that was very good news. And the deer that some of you watched me make in an earlier broadcast um, is going to be in an exhibition in Milford Haven, which is in West Wales, for those of you who aren't in the UK. And then it's moving up to London, so that's quite exciting to have a, a piece there. Um, what I'm currently working on, um, can we go down, Rob, onto this thing, is um, this is a commission I'm working on uh, of three people. It's a mother and two sons, and this is the point it's reached so far. So they are going to be grouped something like that eventually. Um, so at the moment, I've, I've done their faces, as you can see. Um, and hopefully got reasonable likenesses, hopefully good likenesses of each character. Um, I'll just try and show you those. So now that each of the faces are done, uh, I've started, made a very rough start on the clothing that they're wearing. The two boys are wearing shirts and the mother's just got a, a dress. Um, so very rough versions of their clothing but now that I know roughly how they're going to fit together the next step is to actually join them together uh, and then I will finish the clothing because obviously the clothing interacts with it, each other so his shirt will slightly overlap her dress and so on so they've got to be joined together in order for me to be able to to do that successfully so that will be my next job. So hopefully when we meet again, if you come back and see my next uh, broadcast, you'll see this completed. Um, and my plan is to actually fix these pieces to a nice piece of wood so there's a board at the bottom. Because the way they're being posed, they're actually in quite a straight line um, and I think it would look nicer if they're actually standing on a board. So um, that's, that's another next step to do. So this is it so far, and when we meet again, I'll show you how they've progressed, and hopefully they'll be finished by then, or getting much closer to being finished. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I was saying that about hair. I thought I would just show you this one. You may have seen this piece before. This is a finished piece. I've decided to leave this one in its natural colour, rather than colour it, um, and it's called Girl with Plait and you'll see why when I turn her round because she has got quite a substantial plait um, and I thought this would be quite a good example to show you for doing hair, human hair um, so we'll do that in a little, little while I'll show you how you do that um, and I'll also show you how you could get the texture of animal fur rather than human hair so that's coming up if we've got time at the end um, so, those of you who um, have been watched my channel before, we've been working on this piece together. I've been showing you how I make an armature. Uh, this is the piece that we're attempting to make. Can we go in closer, Rob, please? Yeah, that's it. So, we decided to do a very simple standing pose. Um, and this picture is quite a good reference picture because we've got front, back and a three-quarter view. Um, so it's a nice straightforward pose, no dropped hips, no arms in difficult positions or legs in different difficult positions. Um, and this is how far we've got so far. Uh, when I left you last time we had completed the front of the torso um, and the beginnings of the thighs and the buttocks and we have left to do just a little bit more on the back to fill out this area here and 
a little bit on the lower legs and I'm not going to do very much on the lower legs because they become quite thin I think eventually I'm going to just um, put the papier mache straight onto these uh, wooden chopsticks that we've used as supports but for those of you who haven't been watching along this is made entirely of newspaper and masking tape um, masking tape in case you're not familiar with it is this okay so we're going to carry on with a little bit more of this this evening so I'm going to build out the um, ribs at the back here and just do a little bit to the knees here um, and then when when it's reached a suitable point so really when we finish those bits that's when I can start putting the clay on here because I think this is enough indication now for us to be able to actually start sculpting the piece uh, but we probably won't get round to that this evening um, so the reference pictures um, that I've been using is a, a skeleton here so we can just see how the the bones actually fit inside the skin and then I had a I was using this picture just to give a back view again to show the bones and the sort of basic anatomy of this person okay so if we go back to this picture um, this evening we're just going to have a look at if we look at the side view of the, the person here can we go in closer again Rob please you'll see that um, the rib cage on the front bulges out quite a lot and on the back it's much shallower here and there's a lot more skin here uh, above the um, skeleton on the belly here than there is on the back. So there's very little really on the back there. So that's the bit we're going to just look at it to begin with. So I've got some just basic bits of newspaper here which I'm going to scrunch up and just place here just to fill it out a little bit so it does round out a little bit on the back here. So I'm just going to position the newspaper there and with pieces of masking tape just put it into position like this. So you can see now that side view has filled out quite nicely to give the impression of the rounded rib cage going round to the back. Now I'm going to just squish it into place at the back here because if we look at the back view of our picture here, it's perhaps not easy for you to see, but it goes inwards towards the spine. So there's quite a a valley here if you like. So I want to retain that. Okay. And now I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm just starting to calm down now because it was quite stressful just now when we were trying to get online. So I was a bit panicky thinking, how am I going to tell everybody that it's not going to happen tonight? But fortunately, Rob and my son Sam, who was on the telephone, uh, sorted it out between them. So thank you very much to you both for doing that. Oh, yeah, sorry, I went off. Camera. So again, I'm just going to get that valley towards the spine there. So you can see there's much more of a shape now to that. Now the next job is to just do some um, shoulder blades. Now the shoulder blades, um, if we look at this diagram, here are the shoulder, shoulder blades 
and they're just, if you think of them as a simple triangle, there, and the, the shoulder blades, if when you move your arms, the shoulder blades move with you, and you know, depending which direction you move your arms, the shoulder blades will move in that direction. But for this pose, she's simply got her arms just in front of her body, so they are going to be very just very simple um, triangles at the shoulders here, and this is where the arms will eventually connect. So it's just the merest suggestion that we're putting in here because they're not huge. The shoulder blades. So become if if the arm was forward like this leaning forward it would um, make the the shape of the uh, shoulder blade quite quite different and again if the arm was back the shoulder blade would come jutting outwards this way but this would be quite a this is why we're doing this pose because it's a nice simple pose for those of you who haven't done this before it's um it's a nice one to start on So again, I'm retaining that valley where the it goes into the spine. And the shoulder blades will eventually connect to the collarbone at the front. So there's the uh, side view again doesn't have to be too precise because once we start putting on the clay, uh, the papier-mâché clay, you can adjust this and uh, make things more pronounced or less so as you like. So there's the back of it. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to call the the back finished now because we've, if you remember we did the buttocks last time. Um, Actually, something I wanted to tell you about this, it's quite a, a handy tip if you're um, sculpting the bottom of a person. Um, if you imagine that this, do you remember last time we talked about this hip bone that goes up around here on each side? Well, it comes round onto this side here, obviously. Um, and if you think of this whole shape, it's being a little bit like a butterfly. If I sort of, a butterfly's wings, if I put that up like that. So from this hip bone, if you imagine that's the top of the wing of a butterfly. Whether you can see, can you see that? And then it comes down the lower wings of the butterfly come down underneath the buttocks like that. Can you can you see that? So if I shade that in, that's the butterfly area. And that will give you this slight indentation that you get at the top of the thigh here. When you come to do the put the actual clay on that will guide you to get a nice realistic shape. So I hope that might be helpful to anyone who's sculpting a, a human figure. Right, so the next thing we're going to look at is um, on our particular um, reference photograph, the girl has got quite, um, her knees are actually quite knock knees, she, she, they're pointing inwards. Uh, and I, I quite like that, I think that gives the piece character. Um, so I think we're going to try and retain that. Uh, so as we showed last time, the outer thigh is curved like this and the inner thigh is quite straight. Then the lower leg, again, it's quite straight on this side and quite a, quite pronounced in its curve on the outside. And with the knee just jutting out a little bit there, it's going to give you that slightly knock-kneed um, pose. And then when we see it from the back, uh, you see that the calves actually bulge out quite a lot there. 
because of the way her knees are turning inwards. So we're going to try and try and get that with this. So what I need to do is to just give her some tiny little kneecaps, uh, which will be just a an indication of where they are for when we put the clay on. So I reckon her knees are going to be about here. Um, and as we said, they are actually turning inwards. So I'm going to put one there, just a little bit of newspaper screwed up. With some masking tape on. And if you remember, we um, these chopsticks that we used for reinforcing the legs are much longer than they need to be, but we're just leaving them on for the time being, uh, and we can cut them off when we've decided exactly how long we want her legs to be. There's one. We might adjust it slightly in a minute. We'll see how it looks. So she's got swollen knees. I'm trying to get a bit better with my camera work, but I still keep going off a bit. Rob, Rob hisses at me every now and then. Time to get back in front of the camera. Right, so very rudimentary knees. But they hopefully make a bit more sense when we put the lower leg on. So I think we want to think of the curve of this thigh coming down and round like that. And now we're going to just do a little bit to the calf because I think it'll show nicely how this bit is really very rounded here. So it continues from the knee around there. So the thigh comes down and around like that and the calf comes around like that. And also, one other thing to say, the calf usually starts from just above the knee. The muscle, actually, of the calf starts a bit well above the knee. So I'm going to start my piece of paper from up there to try and get this in position. So I'm going to keep this side very close to the stick so that we retain that straightness. I'm just going to pull this in quite tightly on this side now so that we keep the straightness of the stick to guide us.
and then I'm not going to put much more newspaper onto this lower leg. I'm going to let the clay do the work when we come to that stage. But you can see that that shape leg is starting to take shape now. And if we turn around and look at it on the back, we we'll use this reference picture here. You'll see that the the knee there is slightly bulges out. The muscle starts from up here above the knee, and then it sort of flattens out a little bit there. So I'm just going to squish that down a bit, but try and retain the straightness of the stick there. So I'm just going to pull and push till I feel that looks like our reference picture. So I think it's because you can just see the edge of the knee through the leg there. Okay. And then we'll just do the other side. So again we want to have that curve that comes from the knee outwards. As you've probably gathered I tear up a lot of bits of uh, masking tape before we come on air so I haven't got to keep fiddling and tearing it off. So they're stuck all over all over the place just off camera so you can't see them but uh, it means I can just grab grab some ready cut pieces and I advise you to do that yourself when you do it because it's so much easier if you've got because you're trying to do everything you know so you need another set of arms really to be able to do all this so if you've got your paper cut ready for your masking tape already cut for you it does help a huge amount Just shaping it with my hands. It's great actually. This uh, the newspaper and the masking tape is quite malleable actually. When you're um, at this stage, you can squish it into shape quite well actually. It's quite helpful. So can you see that we we are getting the slightly knock kneed shape of this girl's legs? Going to pull that around there a little bit more. And I'm using, as I'm getting further down the leg, I'm using this chopstick almost like her shin bone. That's why I don't really want to put too much more newspaper onto this because uh, when we come to putting the clay on, it will actually help us to have the firmness of this stick to represent the bone in her leg. body to this calf muscle. You can adjust this because I, I feel that this leg is slightly smaller than the other leg at the moment but um, obviously if I had more time I would take a bit more trouble over it but 
it can all be corrected at a later point, so it's not crucial. Right, so we're starting to, to build this up and this these calves will go down now into her ankles, into here, and then eventually we'll be making her some little boots when we start to dress her. So yeah, this leg is definitely bigger than the other one. I'll have to sort that one out. Just going to pull that in with the tape nice and tight. Okay. So I hope you feel that that's uh, beginning to take shape now. So I think we'll probably leave that for now. Um, what's the general opinion? Do you want me to carry on with this next time or do a bit before I see you again? Drop me a message in the com in the chats just to let me know what you prefer. Uh, I'm just going to pull that over a little bit. And you'll notice I haven't given her a head um, and she hasn't got any arms yet but I tend to leave those till we've actually started putting the clay on um, because when we do the, the upper torso with the clay, papier-mâché clay, um, we'll obviously sculpt things like the collarbone around here and that'll indicate more where the shoulders are and therefore we can then put, uh, put the arms in a, a better position. What I do tend to do though um, when I come to do the arms, I'll just show you this very quickly, but I'm going to take them off again. Um, I use, um, uh, what do you call them, toothpicks to uh, for the arms, just to give a little bit more shape, so you know where you're, you're going with them. So um, what I tend to do is get a tool like this, this is a very sharp, pointy sculpting tool, and just make a hole roughly where I'm going to join the arms in and then I can just get a toothpick and just stick it in there like that and you just get it's just to position the upper arm and then I might her elbow is sort of waist level so I might just snap the the stick just to show where the elbow goes. Okay, and the same on the other side. But I won't uh, leave that in there for now because it'll get in the way of when we start putting the clay on. Obviously, we've got to at some point give her some breasts, um, but again, we'll just do that I think with the clay because she's not actually huge um, in that department. If she was, you know, quite a buxom woman, um, I might start by putting um, some newspaper there just to fill out the breast area but because she's actually quite small um, I think we can just do it with the with the clay. So there she is at the moment. Um, so any comments Rob to see whether they want me to carry on doing this? We'll carry on next time. Yeah. yeah carry on next time. Okay well I'll leave it. I'll resist the temptation to do any more to her until I see you again. Um, and at some point, obviously, we'll give her a head, but we might do a whole session on making a face, which would be quite interesting, I think, for you to see. Liz Gamble is doing it as you go along. Oh, well done, Liz. <laughs> How are you getting on? Is it uh, is it turning out well? Leave me a message to, to let me know. Uh, so, is, if everyone's happy with that, we'll stop on that bit for now, this evening. Um, and we'll go over to doing some work on um, hair, as I said earlier. So I'll just leave that one there, put these away. Uh, so what I've done in order to demonstrate the hair situation um, is I just made a little um, egg shape. This is just a screwed up ball of newspaper uh, with some papier-mâché clay over the top of it which has gone fairly hard. I did this earlier today. Uh, so this just is to give us a, a base to work on. Now it's not supposed to be anything, it's not supposed to be a head or a body or anything, it's just a, a base for me to, 
just demonstrate how you can um, get some really good textures for the hair. Um, so I've got my pot of papi mache clay here, which I made yesterday. Um, I don't know really, have I shown you the clay before? I expect some of you already use this. This is the recipe of uh, Johnny Good. Those of you who've done papi mache and know of Johnny Good. Um, lovely lady in America who does lots of papier-mâché. She's the person that got me started in all of this. Uh, she makes animals um, and, you know, beautiful animals. And this is her recipe for the clay. Uh, when I saw her, I saw her first of all on YouTube making some of her animals and I just thought, oh, this looks fantastic. I must have a go at it. And so I made her recipe and I've been using it ever since. And that's like eight years ago. It never fails. It's beautiful. Uh, stuff to work with. It's a lovely consistency. It's very soft and uh, malleable. You can do all sorts of things with it. Um, it does dry out very quickly so that's why I keep it covered in this cling wrap. Um, so when you're not using it keep it covered up otherwise you'll just end up with a solid block and you won't be able to do anything with it. Um, so first of all taking our little uh, base if you like um, if we just think of this as now uh, the back of someone's head um, and we're going to put some hair on it, first of all I would just put a, quite a nice big blob of it on, like that. And then taking, well I've got all sorts of tools here um, and you might think that that pointy one is going to be the best one to use. But sometimes it's not actually, it's sometimes better to use something. These tools are actually a bit grubby because I've been working today and it's dried on. I can get it wet, just get this off. Um, I like these sort of slightly spoon shaped uh, tools uh, and you can get some nice effects with that. So if, if we go back to this one, now if we're thinking that we're doing a nice head of hair you literally just start off, get your the tool wet and with the flat of it just start to rough up the surface of this a little bit. Now I like to go for realistic hair that has got some movement in it. So I mean hair doesn't just lie flat to your head, It's uh, especially if you're outside it moves around with the, the wind or whatever um, and also some hair I know is all of what absolutely all the same length but I quite like to get um, the look of sort of strands in hair and the fact that there are bits of your hair which are thicker than other bits um, especially in a hairstyle like this I mean there's a big dent in there where several strands of hair are crossing over one another and it gives this lovely 3D effect. So when I'm doing hair I do like to flick it a little bit like this so that you get the impression of strands of hair. Keep wetting the tool because that helps and then I like to sort of dig into it a little bit and flick it in different directions so that you get more of a 3D effect to the hair. And sometimes going upwards is, is useful because you, you can flick your hair up as if the wind's caught it. So you can get some very nice effects by doing this. Obviously you can do um, smoother hair if you want to but I do like to have the uh, the feeling of movement in it, all the things I make actually, so that they're not static. So you can just play about with this, and it, it, you know, it's, you've got plenty of time before it dries. So if you don't like it, you can just change it. So this is like rather a messy haired person. Perhaps you just got out of bed or something. They haven't brushed their hair yet. Perhaps we're in a storm. I don't know if you can see that, it's started to get quite nice effects. 
with this. Um, and if I show you on this model I'm currently working on, on the woman's hair, um, I've got some nice 3D effects at the back. You can see it's quite a choppy style. And because this lady has got white hair, grey and white hair, um, I've coloured it slightly here so that it's darker at the back. She, this lady obviously was like her sons originally. They're very, very dark. And she probably had dark, very dark hair once upon a time. And there's some of it still left at the back here. And then it gradually gets lighter towards the top. But um, I like how she's got a choppy fringe. And that was all done in this same way. Uh, gradually building up the style, looking at lots of photographs of her from all sides. And uh, the boys, this guy's got a bit of an Elvis quiff going on I think. And it's harder to see when it's coloured but he's got very very dark hair and I was trying with this one to get, um, his, his hair is very straight and very spiky. So I was trying to get, I don't know whether you can actually see it very well on here, but um, there's quite a, a, a an element of spikiness going on at the top, at the crown of his head. And also with his brother, his hair is a little bit flatter, but still very, very short and spiky. So in his crown here, I tried to get the flick here of the spiky hair. Liz has asked, did the sons commission this for their mother? Uh, no, their father did actually. Um, he, he commissioned me to do them. First of all, it was just going to be the two boys and then he decided that he'd like the mother in as well. So um, it's turned into a slightly bigger job, but uh, it's been very enjoyable to do. Um, and I hope that they're going to feel that the likenesses are good. Uh, I've tried very hard with them. When I do, um, most of my commissions are portraits. Um, and I always say to people who commission me, I'll only take it on if, the, if you provide me with really good photographs. Because obviously I, I just can't get a good likeness unless I've got really clear photos taken on all sides. Um, so if you can get good profile photographs that's a bonus for me because then um, you know because the people look very different from the side to when you see them face on so if you're trying to get a good likeness you need to get the profile right as well otherwise it's just not going to look like the person so i hope that the uh, my client is going to be pleased with this when it's all finished uh, still got a lot more to do so if, if he's watching, don't panic, he's not finished. Uh, right, so I hope that has given you a bit of an idea of how to do hair. And uh, if you, those of you who watched me do the, um, the deer, obviously I had to do animal fur on there. And you do that in a similar way. Um, so if I just now smooth this out, say goodbye to the human head and we'll just treat this now as an animal uh, so with the deer for instance deer has got quite velvety skin so it's it's a bit smoother actually than you would find on a human um, not so strandy um, but what I did there was to, to um, depict the, the velvetiness of a young deer I left some of the areas with hardly any markings at all, so I just and try and think about how how long the hair is. So if the the deer, for instance, the hair is actually quite short, so you you only want to do little sh little short strokes with your modelling tool to just suggest it, and then at certain places on the deer, so perhaps where the um, the joint of the if I can make from memory what the joint of a the hip of a deer is. Um, so imagine that's his back there and here's the the hip here which uh, comes round like that and then goes into the little spindly leg 
that comes down here. Usually at that bit where it curves under the animal into its belly, round this hip, you usually find that there are quite, it's quite tufty here as it goes down onto the belly and certainly where the um, where the hip joins the body you get little little tufts here where I, I like to sort of flick the clay up a bit so that the fur is a bit more obvious in some places so this is coming round to the back of his where his tail would be and that's usually quite a flicky area of fur. So if you imagine a tail coming out here and the leg coming down there. So I think Barbara Nolan, I think, did you say that you were going to be doing a dog? I've done a few dogs um, and you have to decide if it's going to be a short haired dog or a long haired dog because as I said before if it's a short haired dog keep your tool marks very much shorter and maybe if the, the dog's hair is very coarse you might want to do a bit more flicking like this. Okay. Uh, but if it's a very smooth haired dog or long haired dog, you might want to use the flat of the tool and just literally sweep like that, which will give you the impression of texture without uh, strands. So I don't know whether that's helpful or not for you. Um, I hope that was was useful. Is there any questions? Just put them in the chat and uh, if we've got time we'll try and cover them this evening. Okay, so that's a little, little exercise in putting fur or hair. Okay, uh, and how are we doing for time? Good. Well, we, well we started late so I don't know whether you want to carry on for a bit longer. No problem. Twelve minutes, okay. Um, so I think what we'll do then, um, as we've got some time, we might go back to this and just put a bit of clay on, just so that we can s start to see how we do this. So I've just taken her arm off, so it's not in the in the way. Um, so I think Liz, you're the one who's going along with this, aren't you? Um, you might want to just. I don't know whether you've got any clay ready made now. But anyway, I'll show you how I would start. So you get the clay and just wet your fingers and I'm just going to smooth it on. And at this point, I'm going to put quite a thin layer on because um, I don't want to lose all the definition that I've managed to get in with the newspaper and the masking tape. So this is literally just to cover it. So keep it fairly wet, if you get, get your finger wet and just spread the clay across the, the armature. And you can see it's beautifully smooth already, which is the lovely thing about this particular recipe for the clay. It's, it's so nice and smooth. And uh, I don't know whether um, you know, but it's the clay, you use the usual uh, ingredients that you would have in the old-fashioned papier-mâché so it's paper glue flour uh, but you add a little bit of filler as well um, which makes it go nice and hard but I use um, and Johnny Good uses toilet paper rather than newspaper because you get this much finer beautiful clay to work with it's really lovely to work with and as we've said before once it's dry you can do all sorts of things. You can slice bits off, you can add bits on, and you can work on it when it's wet or dry, it doesn't matter. Um, if we look at the side view here, uh, we want to retain a slight um, curvature over the belly here. So I'm just going to do that bit now. 
I want to retain that before we get into any detail. Barbara has asked, do you also use wall joint compound in your clay? Yes, that's, when I said filler just now, that's what I mean. It's um, ready-made, ready-mixed filler. So the sort of stuff that you use to mend cracks in a wall or something. Um, but use the ready-mixed stuff rather than powder. Uh, it's much easier to use. In fact, Rob, can you pass me that tub of it there? Or in, in, in here, maybe. Come on. I'm going to try and just show you um, the tub of it. So, you... thank you. So, this this is what I use: um, interior ready mixed filler. Uh, and as you can see from this picture, it's, it's what you use to fill cracks with. Um, so you just put some of this in the mix. I, we put the, the recipe, I think, haven't we? On the, I think it's on yeah. on the YouTube front page of my my channel um, I think there's a link to the recipe um, and it'll give you all the quantities that you need of, of all the various ingredients but this is um, a, a major part of it it's sort of equal measures of flour and glue and the glue I use I think there was a question on Facebook yesterday about glue um, I use just PVA glue I think in America you might call this Elmer's glue. It's the sort of stuff that people use in schools anyway. It's just white PVA glue which dries clear. Okay. Um, so the, the recipe calls for, for equal measures of that. Um, tissue paper, toilet paper, flour, corn flour, um, a little bit of baby oil any sort of mineral oil, but baby oil smells much nicer than linseed oil. Um, and you end up with this beautiful soft material to work with. And I think this is what hooked me on this you know, when I started using this. It was just such a pleasure to work with. Now, I hadn't done any sculpting before. I've never done anything with clay or anything like that, you know, proper clay. Um, so I don't know whether I'd like doing that, but I just love doing this, so I've just stuck with it. So you can see now I've retained the curve of the belly there. And I've also I'm also trying now to retain the edge of the rib cage here and here. You can see it's quite sticky, that's why if you use a wet finger it uh, just helps to make it easier to, to use, it doesn't stick to your fingers. It's a bit like pastry actually, if, you, if, if any of you make pastry, um, it's very similar to that. In fact the process of making it is very like making pastry. Uh, I was just talking to Rob today about um, future things to do on these videos and we were saying that we might try and make a, a little video um, of me making the clay um, so that you can just watch not live because it just take up too much space in this tiny studio to do it but um, you can just see how it's made or you can just go to Johnny Good's site and watch her make it I mean I make it in exactly the same way as her so um, you know, if you can't wait for me to get around to making a video, you can watch her do it. And she's she's an excellent teacher as well. So when I first came across her, um, I made a lot of her animals. She she's got a couple of books out which I bought and made some of her animals. Um, but for me, I just love making people. Um, I I do make animals from time to time, but. My passion really is making people. I just love doing particularly faces. I like ex you know getting expressions in. Um, I like challenging myself with different um, stances. Uh, and I just find it very satisfying actually. So we can see now that we're coming up towards the armpit here. So I'm going to leave a dent in there for the armpit and just continue up here 
towards the shoulder. And same on this side. She is leaning slightly actually, which I quite like. I know it's a simple pose, but I think a slight lean will be quite a nice natural pose because nobody stands absolutely straight in them. So I'm giving an indication here of where the shoulder starts and the armpit. I'll do the same this side. Seems that everybody started with Johnny Good. Oh right, yeah, well she's a very popular woman. Yeah. And she's such a good teacher. So what what do the majority of you make? Are you into animals or uh, humans or both? What's the general opinion? Right, we can just go around to the side here, retaining this. This gamble makes animals. All right, okay. I think we'll have to have a session um, on one of these where you send me your photographs of things you've made and we'll put them up on my one of my programmes. We can all see each other's work, that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? Barbara likes to make animals and caricatures. She's working, ah. working on a dragon at the moment. Ah, now I think you showed me a picture of your dragon. It looked very, very good. It's quite big actually, wasn't it? This has managed to sell a few things. Well done, well done. Is that commissions or do you sell it uh, fairs or galleries or what do you do? So you can see you can actually cover this quite quickly uh, before we start getting into details. The dragon is going to be about three to four feet. <laughs> it did look big. And I think you promised you'd show it to me when it was finished, didn't you? So I look forward to seeing that. Uh, now, as we go around to the back, don't forget we've got these um, shoulder blades. So we want to just make sure that they are visible. So have we got anyone here that does papier-mâché the old-fashioned way with the strips of paper and glue? We've got eight people watching, um, but only two people chatting really, so we don't know who the other people are. Ah, uh, right, okay. Well, what I usually find is that um, after these broadcasts, <coughs> the, um, we leave it up on YouTube and quite a few people actually watch it not live. So... Um, <laughs> that makes me feel a bit better, actually, that there's more people watching eventually. And it's quite nice, it doesn't really matter, does it? If, um, it's nice when we've got people watching live because they do actually communicate with me, but uh, it's also nice if people watch it afterwards. As long as someone's looking at it, it's uh, worth it. There, so I'm retaining now this hollow in, in the back. Can you see that? Liz usually puts strips of newspaper over the top of the masking tape. Ah, right. Well, um, why do you do that? Is that? Do you find that the clay goes on better? I, I don't have any problem with um, clay straight onto the masking tape. Is there a particular reason why you do that? Again, here there's the armpit, so I'm making sure that I go into that from the on the um, shoulder blade. Mm. This uh, she feels the clay goes on better, but it might be just her. Ah, right. Okay. So, of course, we're doing this figure. Um, she's well, she's naked in effect, isn't she? Because we're not putting any clothes on her. We're just doing her basic body shape. So, another fun bit I really love doing is. Um, doing the uh, drapery of the clothing that people wear. So in our um, 
reference picture here, you can see these lovely drapes and creases in her clothes, which I love doing that. Um, and it really gives lots of, that gives movement to the piece uh, and also just makes it much more realistic. So if I um, show you with, oh, I just stuck that on there. Um, with these commissioned pieces, I'm just starting now to, to do that with the clothing. This is the very basic, so it will get a lot better than this. But you can see I'm starting to put the, the folds into the, the shirts um, so that it looks as if they're actually moving within their clothing and not just puppets. What are we doing for time now? Ten past ten. Right, well we should probably draw this to a close now. So we've made a start on, on the clay now and so things are going to get a bit more interesting now. I think it was, making the armature was um, a point of interest for some people who haven't made figures before and maybe haven't made armatures in this way. So I hope you found that useful um, and we'll move on in our next session to actual, actually sculpting more of the features of this person um, and you know some of you I'm sure I don't need all this help but it's, you might pick up the odd tip now. Barbara are. says will you let this dry before you continue to add more clay? Uh, you don't have to, um, you can do either. Uh, um, certainly um, if you were, there are certain parts of it where you were, if you were going to do a lot of fine detail um, you might prefer to let it dry before you go on to the next stage but um, you could certainly, if this is still very tacky, um, but you could certainly add to this now uh, without having to wait for it to dry. That, that's the, the benefit of this lovely material, I think, is that uh, you can do what you like with it, really. <laughs> it's, uh, it's brilliant stuff. So that's tonight's little workshop done, um, and we'll carry on with this next time. Um, so, the next broadcast is on the 2nd of September. October. Uh, sorry, October. I've written September on my little crib sheet here. Sorry about that. Yes, October. Um, what have I written there? Oh yes, and I meant to say that the, the previous broadcasts we've done are still on YouTube if you want to watch them. If you've missed the, the first three or four, um, you can still find them on there if you want to watch. Uh, the other thing to tell you is that um, I mentioned in my last broadcast that I'm doing a workshop here at my house if you're in the UK in October. Well that workshop is now full um, but I am planning to do one in November so anyone who's close enough to want to come and do a workshop actually in person with me um, just drop me a message and we'll come up with some dates in November. Uh, they're two day workshops so if you're not in uh, an area close to Cardiff you would have to obviously think about staying somewhere but um, yeah contact me for details if you're interested uh, so in the meantime I'll say cheerio can you put me back on so I can <laughs> say goodbye to everyone yeah bye bye and hope to see you again next time and remember if you liked this please like and subscribe to the channel. It's free and it just means that you'll be notified when another one is about to happen. Okay, so thanks for joining me and I'll see you again next time. Bye.